G'day guys, I hope you're all going well. I've got the BA wagon today and um, you're probably watching this video if your car has a broken or damaged bonnet release flap and um, you've been using some locking pliers to actually <laughs> un undo your bonnet. Now today I'll be showing you all how you can actually remove and replace your damaged bonnet release cable mechanism. Um, so as we all know, you still can get by using, you know, some side pliers or um, some locking pliers, but it's more of a nuisance. And in this case, for mum, you know, being a little elderly, let me rewind that. Being that she's a little bit elderly, um, you know, I needed to get this job done for her. So you can get new ones of these on eBay or I believe from the dealer as well. And that way you can uh, flap into the future <laughs> with no <laughs> with no stress. <laughs> All right, so I'll link a little video how you can remove the inner guard liner here. Um, but that's where we can see the actual bonnet cable exiting from inside the car. And um, I'll show you all today how you can actually do this job DIY. Um... Um, you actually have to remove the kick panel. There's a little plastic covering that's covering this section. Now to remove that kick panel, you need to remove other pieces of trim, like this scuff plate here. There's two screws, and once you remove them, it just clips out. You can remove this um, part of the seat trim. You need to go to the back and do the same thing. You want to remove um, some sections that will let you access the back half of this um, kick panel. So go ahead and remove the two screws for this part of the kick panel here. There's a little side trim piece here. There's a little trim piece for the back half of the actual uh, seat that just clips and slides out. Now for the actual seat belt itself, the tail end is bolted to the body of the car. There's a little plastic cap. Get yourself a size T50 Torx um, removal tool, which will let you unbolt the bolt that's holding the base of the seat belt. Now with that gone, you'll be able to undo the seat belt and um, from where it anchors, you can then remove some of the base pieces of trim. Awesome, and with that done, then you can remove the kick panel, which will give you the access to the uh, to removing and working in this area to remove and replace your broken release, uh, bonnet release. Awesome, so to start with guys, um, what we can do is go around, take another look Here's a bit of a torch we can see. So this is where the bonnet cable itself um, exits and starts to run along the top of the guard, you know, kind of sheathed alongside some wiring there and then exits into the um, engine bay through that little hole opening, which is to the side of the battery. Um, I'll get this little rag out of the way. Um, here we can see that little black cable there. That's the bonnet cable. It runs along the bottom of this uh, Rio here underneath that section and that's of course where it hooks to the release mechanism. You need to remove your um, grill, so there's two little plastic um, screwable clips. When you remove those clips then you can remove the actual um, grill itself, four clips here and you can remove this upper plastic cowling and then it gives us the access to the two bolts that actually hold the release mechanism itself. Um, I had only, you know, this is my first time doing this job, so I decided to use a permanent marker to mark the current location and seated position of the actual mechanism. Um, they're 10 millimeter bolts, so get yourself some sockets here. And once you remove those bolts, we can then get access to actually unhook the old cable. Awesome. And just to show you a little closer here at a different angle, um, there's a ball end that's basically hooked onto the actual mechanism and that little rubber grommet just seats it in place. So just from a better angle, we'll be able to see the new one that's got the ball end and the rubber grommet. And uh, if you get yourself a good uh, flathead screwdriver, you're able to remove the grommet section first. And um, once that's out of the way, then you can unhook the ball end. So I found I was able to lever the rubber grommet upward and with that unhooked out the way, 
you're able to then um, slide. I found the best uh, advice I can give here is just slide the actual cable mechanism forwards and then you can um, unhook the, it's like a metal, a metal wire that then unhooks from that little catch there. And that's it. So that's the old one out of the way. From and, this point um, forward, guys, I want to show you all what you need to do to actually um, remove the old cable in place of the new one. So on this new one, I can show you guys that there's a weather seal that holds the actual bonnet cable onto the actual chassis of the car. Once you push that weather seal into the cabin, you're then able to pull out the old cable. Awesome. So here we're back under the car um, in the wheel arch and with our flathead screwdriver, we can push in the weather seal, which will then allow us to be able to push in the remainder of the old cable back into the cabin and out for the last time. Awesome. So that's giving us the access to be able to push the cable through. And um, what we need to do, guys, is actually unhook the cable from a few sections. So in one section, we need to unhook the cable. It's held here by a little plastic clip. And as we can see, you can just unhook the cable from that kind of located position. And the other one is here just in front of the battery. Again, it's another little plastic hook and you're able to kind of unsheath the cable from its position. Beautiful, and that's it. So now the cable is essentially free from the car. Um, what I found to make life a little easier, um, if you undo the bolt that's holding this top radiator mount, it'll then give you a lot more easier access to pull out that ball end from under the actual Rio here. And that just pulls straight up and out. And now that makes the radiator that little bit looser and you're able to then just slide out the end of that ball, end of the bonnet release cable. So here from under the car, we can pull out the cable. It's now no longer hooked in at the top of the guard there on the wiring side. We can then just go through, push it and undo it from that top position, pull it down from here. And with that done, feel free you can slide in as much of it as you like here through into the cabin. I did some of it and the rest I went in from, from the cabin side and just pulled out the remainder. And that's it, that's as, um, well, they say that's the last time that this uh, cable will ever live on in this car. <laughs> um, but it's a very, very kind of simple process now. We just need to reverse everything that we just did. Um, so we can pull out the remainder of the old cable. That's it, be gone. <laughs> that's it, give it a bit of a bird. <laughs> All right, guys, so now we can go through and start to push through the new cable. So essentially we're reversing the whole removal process. Um, you can go through and just slot this in. That'll be going out into the, the guard side. Feel free, you can just slot in and push through as much of the, the new cable. Here what I found that was actually um, slightly easier was to pull through the excess of the cable um, this way rather than trying to feed it through from the cabin side. So uh, feel free, you can just pull all of that excess cable through. Now, before I went and routed the cable through the rest of the guard and into the engine bay, I went back to the cabin side and wanted to make sure that um, most of the excess was pushed through. I actually started getting that um, weather seal type of grommet to start to seat a little bit. Um, but I wanted to make sure as step one was that I wanted to make sure that the latch was actually going to fit into my, um, under the glove box area here, not glove box, but the... Um, fuse box. So here we can see there are two feet and they hook in into the little opening here and um, they kind of uh, slot over and in. So you kind of rotate them and you'll see those feet kind of slide in and click in. Now I'm not sure of some of the damage that was caused to my fuse box here. It was slightly loose but it seated well and I was able to flap the flap. <laughs> 
And that's it guys. So um, now we can go back to the guard side and start to route the actual cable up at the top of the guard, exactly where it was clipped in. So we can take it up here. A little tricky one-handed, but uh, I'll get you guys a little closer. You can clip in that little holder there, perfect. So that's the top one done. Then we can go through and push through this end of the cable, through the opening here behind the battery, and into the engine bay. Awesome. Coming around from the bonnet side, we can pull that cable through and all the excess out. Um, just make sure you go under this uh, battery clamp area here. And with that done, I'll just change my angle and show you all. Basically what you need to do is get that end of the ball end of the cable behind this radiator section here and fed in under the Rio. It's a little fiddly, I have to do it maybe once or twice, but there's a slight little opening which will then you can access it from underneath the actual Rio. And I'll change the angle of the camera in a second to show you guys. Once you can start to feed it through, you'll see it coming out from here. And there's one more bend that we need to go upward and under the Rio, which will give us access inside that housing area there. Again, this one is another one that took me a few attempts, but you'll be able to feel there's a little hole opening. Once you push that end of the cable through, you'll start to see it coming out on the right here inside that little square opening. So be patient, take your time. And bingo, you'll start to see it feeds. And as you're feeding, you'll see it coming out of the opening there. Perfect. So that's basically it. All that we've got to do now is actually clip it onto the uh, latching mechanism here. And um, as we remember guys, there's that ball end that just hooks in underneath. I'll give it a bit of a wiggle here, I was just testing. But yeah, that ball end just hooks under the little hooked metal area. And with that done and seated nicely, we can then just go through and push the rubber grommet area to kind of um, seat it. And with that pushed in and seated, that's it guys, beautiful. You can slightly jimmy the excess cable back inside and we can bolt it down and that's the job done basically. We've got to go through and just fix that weather seal, just test that it's all working. Um, this was my first attempt at doing this job so I was a little, <laughs> a little anxious. If, uh, if I were to latch the bonnet down, I was hoping that it would all smoothly you know, unlatch and release the bonnet and thankfully I was very lucky there were no issues um, it's a very simple job actually guys um, you'll definitely be able to do this on your own just take your time pay attention to everything as you're initially removing everything and you'll be able to then re you know, repeat your process as you're installing things in so we've got to go and put the top of this radiator mount back on again with that 10 millimeter bolt with that tightened down I was going to go and do my first uh, testing, um, but don't forget there is that little um, plastic retaining clip over here as well. You're able to then make sure that the cable won't go flying around and chafing on anything. As we all know, chafing's never good. <laughs> uh, that's it. So with that done and the cable routed all the way through at the top of the bonnet, top of the um, guard, um, now we can go do a bit of a test. I uh, was initially making sure that it was visually looking like it was latching well and I'm um, feeling confident. Just pushed it down and um, this is the very first attempt. Beautiful, look that just popped straight up, no issues, no hesitation. Job success, as you can see I was very happy here. Um, so guys I hope this, um, I hope this video helps you all out and I'm just seeing the process. I remember like, a couple weeks ago I was looking at the current videos out there and thanks to all the guys that have already released their videos, um, it definitely helped me. But I found there were some things that were missing from their videos. So I hope today I've bridged those, those empty kind of gaps and um, it gives people some more confidence and certainty uh, to tackle this job on your own. So here, this is now good for just, um, who knows, whipping someone with a, 
yeah, just feel free to check that out. Maybe keep it as a spare just in case. But now we can go through, since we know that the bonnet release cable and everything works, we can um, go and put in the front of the, the car back, the, the grill and that top plastic um, cowling there. Um, the two plastic retaining clips, one on the left here and one on the other side for the grill. And we've got the four clips for the top of the cowling section there. Sorry guys, I forgot to speed up this section of the video. But no matter, um, yeah, that's it. Such an easy kind of um, project. Thankfully, there's not a lot involved and um, hopefully I'll be able to guide a lot of people in the future with this video. Um, I definitely was feeling a little more anxious at the beginning, but now just seeing what's involved was so simple. Um, perfect, so finally I wanted to make sure that the uh, weather kind of guard, uh, sorry, the uh, little weather shield area of the grommeting inside the kind of cabin was all sorted. So next up I went through to, to double check on that. Uh, but yeah, such an awesome little thing that we can do on our own. And it's just going to save so much hassle, so much, you know, stress, you know, using side pliers. Um, you know, it can get very annoying, especially if you're rushing to get the bonnet open, or in this case with mum being a bit elderly. And, um, you know, it definitely was really annoying for her to use the side pliers. So, yeah, just so convenient. We always got to flick something for luck with that done. Um, let's go and finish off the last of that um, rubber grommet here under the guard to make sure it's nice and weather sealed. What I found was I was able to actually pull that out slightly um, and that kind of seated in place. You can go and put your inner guard lining on and that's it guys. Awesome.